power dynamics. How do you really navigate power dynamics? Now, it sounds simple enough, but <laughs> um, the challenge becomes um, bringing up into conscious awareness what exactly are we referring to and and let's let's at first at least just take an, an approach on just the terms themselves uh, we understand in some sense the idea of power but if you think about it in terms of energy or focused attention or how we uh, make use of our ability to uh, self-determine to use our autonomy is what gives us power and what gives others power in relationship. Dynamics in the sense that it's not static. It's not not it's not not unchanging. It is in a constant state of flux. Hence a dynamic. You could think of it more in terms of an ecosystem relationship. And the reason I bring this up is because this is what I want to kind of shift our mindsets towards is what I'm calling an uh, ecosystem relationship dynamic. And, and if you have this approach, if you think of your each individual and element as a part of a system that's always changing, always growing, always evolving, you understand it's not uh, limited to the dynamic between you and the other individual, right? When we think about navigating power dynamics, sometimes we just are limiting it just to you as let's say a facilitator and the individual who's like the journeyer or the client. If you limit your perception already in power dynamics to just those two individuals, you already are likely to cause harm. <laughs> in part because you're not recognizing the, the bigger puzzle, the bigger pieces. Think about yourself and your relationships and what, what happens in, in the regular dynamics of your everyday. Do you have um, a partner, a relationship partner? Do you have kids? Do you have family members of any sort that maybe you're in a constant sort of relationship with or, or tertiary relationship, meaning that's a little bit maybe more distant, but it's still in a part of the dynamic in your relationship? Also, are you in a community, whether that's based on location, memory, or uh based on choice, conscious choice of community, you could call the psychedelic community, for instance, uh, an engaged community that you're choosing by common interest and relating. So all of these have a dynamic within them that are always in flux. There are individuals, communities, groups, organizations that you may have a stronger relationship towards or weaker relationship towards, but the point of this is to point out that if you, you need to consider not just the dynamic between you and the other person, but also your own dynamic and relationship to other dynamics outside of the immediate focus of concern, as well as the other individual's interest. Now, granted, you're not going to be fully aware of everyone else's relationships, and you can make explicit some aspects of them that are particularly relevant. But for now, I just wanna focus on this idea that power dynamics is never limited to the two individuals that you're dealing with. <laughs> and and so, so with that said, obviously maybe the most important aspect to address is you. And that's because you have the most access to how you are able to show up as well as an, a control, you could say, or a conscious ability to shift the dynamic, simply by how you yourself relate to your own relationships, including that of the journeyer that you may be in relationship with and that are building and trying to create a conscious power dynamic with. So the first two takeaways I want you to have from, from this little segment is to recognize one, that power dynamics are not limited to the individuals who may be in the room. <laughs> and second, uh, to realize that the most impact you can possibly have is usually with your own part of the power dynamic. As much as you want to perhaps influence or support or um, encourage 
uh, other individuals or relationships or communities to be able to shift their relationship with you, the number one thing you can actually have ability to shift in a power dynamic is you. So these are the first two pieces of navigating power dynamics. Exercise one on navigating power dynamics. Given that we have just established that the first important piece is you and your own awareness of the larger puzzles of power dynamics, <laughs> let's take a moment to consider what are your personal relationships? What are the ones that you navigate on a regular basis? So if you think about your average day, just take a moment and write down what are the relationships that you encounter? And, and if it's easier to think of yesterday, then go ahead and use yesterday. And you're just, all you're doing, going to do is just going to document who are all the individuals you related with. And you can also consider communities or organizations as what you related with and what, where did you have to navigate uh, relational dynamics in the ecosystem of life just yesterday or as you think about today. So maybe you think of, you know, people you're in immediate relationship with, family relationship, communities, organizations, and of course, um, include yourself in that list. Take a moment to do that. Pause this if you need to, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, step two. <laughs> Hope you got finished with the first part. So now that you have a list of all the primary relatings that you had uh, within maybe the last 24 hours or so, now consider who was in the power position what kind of power dynamic was present? Would you say you were the leader, the follower, or were you in a sort of partnership or co-creating sort of more equal relating? So look through all those different types that you listed and now go through and, and just do like the, the first sort of, you know, reflection point on whether you think you were more the leader in that situation more of the follower in the situation, or whether you're a little bit of both in a sort of more consciously co-creating sort of relating. And this isn't to say, it's not a judgment call on any particular piece, but just notice your role in it. For example, if you are an employee for an organization and you had a relation with your boss yesterday, then you may not be as it, you may be the follower, more of the follower in that situation, and the the person who's the boss may be more of the leader, right? Um, or if you're a parent, for instance, you may be the leader more than um, than your child. Although I guess it does depend on on your your relationship. Um, if you have teenagers, um, just a little joke. <laughs> so so this is the next step. You wrote down the first step, which is all the different people you have a relationship with that you noticed in the past 24 hours, either today or yesterday. And now you're going through and noticing whether you're more the leader, the follower, or a little bit of both. Take a moment to do that. And you can pause this if you need to. And we'll go to the next step. Okay. Step three. You've brought into your conscious attention those who you were navigating relationships with in the last 24 hours or so. You have an awareness of whether you're more the leader or the follower or more co-creative. Now I want you to consider to take one of those relationships that stands out in your mind uh, that you would like to shift. If you had the choice to shift, like you notice, let's say that you're more, uh, when you're working with others in community, let's say you notice that you're more of a follower than a leader. Now think of the sort of choices you're making that elicit those sort of actions. What are sort of the types of actions you do? How do you show up when you're more of a follower? So name one or two traits that you have as a follower. And then do the same for each of the other categories. 
So find one where you saw yourself as more of the leader and notice one or two traits that you tend to show or demonstrate when you're in the leader position. And similarly, if you had at least one where you're kind of co-creating, what were some of the traits or uh, behaviors that you had during that experience? So for instance, if it's co-creating, maybe you took turns taking the lead. One person was leading one part of the meeting, for instance, and then the next person took a turn on the meeting, right? Like think of a, for instance, like a panel discussion at a conference is an example, or uh, maybe you're having a family meeting and you're all contributing to the conversation or you're playing a game and, and you're taking turns in the game. So these are all examples you can think of. So try and think of a few descriptive words, characteristics or traits for each type of position for yourself, right? This is based on your own experience. It's not based on what other people think leaders or followers or co-creators should be doing. You're just mainly noting that. So do that. <laughs> you can tell I'm doing the lower, more leader position, right? <laughs> and I'm requesting that you co-create with me to follow um, this set of instructions. And then we'll go on to the, the, the fourth and final step. Step four. So you have your list of uh, relations in the past 24 hours. You have um, labeled them as whether follower, a leader, or co-creator. And then now you have specific things you tend to do in each of those positions or, or types of activities you're engaged in when you're in that position. So in this fourth and final step, what, what we're doing is we're, we're just going to say, how do you identify yourself? Now, you may identify yourself as more of a leader, a follower, or more of a core creator. And, and so take a moment to, to write that down, how you identify yourself. And then notice, uh, looking at your list, when you look at all the relations and the type of positions that you're in, what do you notice more of? So if you like to identify as more of a leader, but you notice that most of the time you're in the follower position, there's at least some sort of disjunct, uh, something that's not as congruent about how you see yourself and versus how you are relating with others. But, but this is just the first point. It's to recognize and identify what do you want? <laughs> how would you like to show up in general when you're in relationship? and you're negotiating power dynamics, and how are you actually showing up? So take a moment, write down what, how you would like to be, and then uh, look back at what you've already noted for the past 24 hours or currently in the day as how you are showing up. Why do we care about power dynamics? Well, there's several different reasons we care about power dynamics, one of which is simply in terms of an ethical framework, is respecting people's ability to make their own decisions and choices and to support in general self-determination. So autonomy is the ability to govern oneself and make one's own choices. Self-determination uh, is, is just basically a reflection of that. And if you think about what ethics needs, what do you need to be a, an ethical person? One of which you need to be able to make your own choices. If you can't have done otherwise, then, then there's not much sense in talking about ethics it, because basically you're forced to do it. So ethics in and of itself assumes that you have a certain degree of self-determination, a, a certain amount of autonomy, the ability to make your own choices. And, and if you just in general believe people don't have the ability to self-determine, to make their own choices, uh, then navigating power dynamics wouldn't really be a conscious ability. <laughs> so in order to navigate power dynamics, you need to, first of all, understand that uh, your autonomy, your ability to make your own choices and be self-determining is a essential component of that. And it's also an essential component of ethics in general. And when we think about psychedelic practice in particular, it's even more important because some of the concerns that show up in general in 
um, applied ethics and bioethics, for instance, that psychedelic ethics falls under in a Western perspective is the fact that we need to consider our ability to make decisions. And if we come back to this notion of the relationships that you're in and you're trying to engage in a conscious relationship with anyone you're with, um, which is what ethics would ask of you <laughs> uh, in general, not that there are different ways of talking about ethics, is that you need to come to terms with your own ability to self-determine. That just as was mentioned, that one of the essential components to be able to deal with power dynamics is to understand you are the one who has the most influence on a power dynamic, but also knowing that you're always in relationship, not just with the individual, but with all the other relationships to an extent that they are involved in that creates the full power dynamics, even if we're trying to focus on a particular power dynamic. And if we want to respect autonomy and we want to be able to encourage and empower people to make their own decisions, including yourself, then navigating power dynamics isn't just a matter of not causing harm or abuse that uh, power dynamics or an abuse of power dynamics is associated with. It's actually really fundamental to being a more ethical uh, practitioner that there's an element of conscious use of power that is fundamental to ethical practice. So that's one of the main things I wanted you to take away from today, <laughs> from this particular piece of the puzzle, that in order to be able to navigate power dynamics, you not only need to understand the, the sort of basic fundamental truths about you being in the power position to influence the power dynamic, but also the fact that you are in relation to other power dynamics that you may not have access to, is that you need to fully embrace and consciously bring into your awareness how you yourself are or are not self-determining, how you use your autonomy, and that you need to embrace the ability to make ethical choices as part of your responsibility. And if you don't do that for yourself as an individual, you certainly can't be able to support that very well or as well for another person, whether they be a junior, a client, your son or daughter, or a parent or extended family member or new, new person at the grocery store that you just met. That understanding your ability to make conscious choice and in your responsibility to be able to act in accordance with what is supportive of your autonomy is an essential aspect to navigating power dynamics.